Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Steffi. Thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Eyal. I do art, but the way I do art is uh, I develop code with very smart people uh, where we try to do very intense uh, 3D physical simulations of sublime moments, no, moments that we as humans normally are not used to experience. And what I do then, I simulate those situations and I freeze moments and I use 3D printers um, to fabricate and freeze those moments as sculptures. I would start uh, with a new work, um, which I call Water Dancer. Um, a year, two years ago, I met Peter Weibel, Professor Peter Weibel here in uh, DLD by my friend Eva. And um, Peter invited me to participate in a Biennale, in Lichtschick Biennale. It's a projection Biennale. And he gave me a location, which is a water fountain. It's a 10 meter water fountain. And what I've created is the following work. Uh, you'll see it, and then I'll explain a little bit. Basically, what you're seeing is uh, it's a fountain. It's a 10-meter fountain. And um, I have, uh, for the last few years, developed this vision technology rig that enables me to capture human movements in real time. Which was developed with some very smart post-PhDs um, engineers actually here in Germany. And I was able to capture a very good friend of mine. She's a world-known choreographer and contemporary dancer, Sharon Eyal. This is the simulation. It's a four and a half terabyte of file. It's, um, I kept her her movement and I made her into this androgynous, you know, human, if you will. And it's water simulation where I'm then projecting on the water. Um, so you can see the intricacy and the quality of the simulation. Um, the music is another MP, it's a, it's a great uh, group from London. I'll move on, I have a lot to show. So this is a snapshot of the location. Um, and because everything is 3D, as I said, I freeze moments and then I use 3D printers to actually print them and uh, fabricate them. So there you can see it. Um, also this year I had a few openings that I want to share. Uh, in the Reich Museum in Holland, I was invited to, to exhibit with uh, William Turner, the famous William Turner, because he was painting sublime moments. And so in those museums, um, I'm privileged enough to show my sublime moment works next to his sublime moments painting. So here is an ocean simulation. It's a piece of ocean, I call it. How do you capture uh, the, the sheer strength of an ocean? All my work is about simulating. I'm not trying to explain that this is reality. I'm trying to explain that we live in a crazy world where the borders between what's real and what's not real are getting, you know, blurred and blurred. Maybe we live in a computer simulation, who knows? So there you can see the sculpture next to um, the paintings of Turner. A another work is this um, huge smoke eruption, probably as a reference to uh, September 11, I guess, for me. And the way I did it, it's a, it's a three, three meters kind of uh, object that it's kind of freezing and encapsulating the work. Um, this is a waterfall. It's black because we are sucking oil out of this earth and we're almost running out of it. And also, so I'm kind of, I created this four meter waterfall and there you can see the sculpture. I think it's the largest 3D printer um, sculpture 
ever printed by Stratasys. I work very close to Stratasys. Um, so I'm here to share um, a crazy project that I'm honored to be part of. I was approached by NASA two years ago. They called me and they said, hey, we are in a trajectory to be totally self-sufficient in space. Uh, our goal is to be self-sufficient in space in 15 years. And the first step, we're, bu we're building a 3D printer. And we wanted to invite you to create a sculpture using this zero gravity 3D printer. Would you like to do it? I said, no, I'm busy. <laughs> Won't do. Anyway, it, was, it became a live project. Very, a lot of people, very smart people are involved. I will show you now a quick clip that Vice, it's a documentary, they're doing a whole feature documentary and they'll be following us around the world. And that's explained better than I do, so check it out. inspired by the notion of zero gravity. It's hard to believe that it can even exist the way you're looking at it. And we started asking him, what would you do if you could build art in zero gravity? I was approached by NASA and they invited me to do the first piece of art in space. And the reason was they created a new kind of a printer, a 3D printer that can print in zero gravity. So that was a big deal for me. I mean, just how do you create a, 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 the first sculpture in space? Made in Space was founded back in 2010 with the idea that people should be living in space now. NASA released in, I think, in the 70s, a golden record where they, they burned into the record many, many uh, elements like music, um, language, all sorts of human cultural things. What they explained me is that as a global entity, culture is important to them. Art is a big part of that. They have a responsibility for humanity. They are a major force of our progress as human. You know, one of the areas that we are excited a lot about is the area of art and how we can design new types of art that maybe we can't even bring back to Earth because we're building a sculpture that wouldn't even survive in gravity. Something that I never predicted became a, of importance was what's the subject matter of the piece of art, taking into consideration that I should believe in as an artist, as well as a worthy piece of art that can represent humanity. And I came up with the idea, how about making a shout out to space using sound sculpture. I kept on thinking about the sound sculpture for space and I realized, you know, maybe I shouldn't even think about using a person or a certain language that has political connotation or uh, culture or time or race. And then a friend of mine said, why won't you do a human laughter? And I said, wow, you're so right. We all laugh. <laughs> and space is so quiet. And just, you know, creating a sculpture that encapsulates a human laughter and mathematically you can always go and decipher the spectrogram of the laughter. So it's almost like a frozen laughter in space. I came up with the idea that we invite people to go to a place online and they can record their laughter and then actually the wisdom of the crowd will actually choose which of the laughter they want to send to space to represent humanity. We can ask the world what laughter soundtrack should we use. So in a computer we can create the simulation of what that laughter sounds like and turning it into the three-dimensional object that then we can 3D print in space and it will exist there. It'll be the sound of humanity in a way. The sculpture itself encapsulates the laughter mathematically so when future humans find it, they can decipher it. To me, it's iconic like the first pen, you know, painting in the cave. Main challenges are A, you're doing something in space, number one. Number two, 
this is a very, very cutting edge, bleeding edge technology. For example, the project been delayed a few times because once the rocket that was supposed to get to the space shuttle with supply exploded on the way. There could be um, asteroid storms that um, can, can delay the project. Um, other than that, hey, it's just making a sculpture in space. It's not that hard. Good radar data. Is everything looking good? Altitude 4200. Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. It was very intellectually challenging and, and exciting to try to forget about fundamental issues we have as humans and how we fuck up the world and how we fight one another and the whole bad things that we as humanity do and elevate to, on the other hand, that we are amazing creatures and we're doing amazing things and look where we got. So, uh, That's one small step for man. I couldn't sleep last night, I couldn't sleep, and why I couldn't sleep? I thought to show um, actually some of the art that I'm designing for NASA, but eventually I said, you know what, it's not, I'm not ready yet to show it publicly, but somebody who is so impactful on me just passed away, David Bowie, and I just heard that, you know, astronomers gave him his own um, constellation this week. He was obsessed with, you know, space. And um, what I decided to do, so from probably 1 a.m. until 6 a.m., I created this very quick, you know, sound-driven visualization based on Bowie, um, amazing uh, Moon Age daydream. So I hope you like it, enjoy it, and here it is. Sound? Sound. <laughs> Sharing the passion of technology and art. Thank you very much. Thank you.